Well, hi, good morning, and welcome to my shop here. It's uh, March, April 3rd, rather, today. So, uh, before I get going here, I just want to be honest with everybody. I, I like everyone, am having a very, very difficult time with the circumstances that are building all around us. Uh, Canada is not going to come through this uh, in the best of shape, uh, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, and it's disturbing me, it's disturbing everybody, it's disturbing you too, I'm sure. So as much as I'm trying to hide away in my shop here, um, I'm having a lot of trouble. Look, it's, it's 9.30, I've been up since 7 this morning. That's how long it's taken me just to get to here. So uh, to try to distract myself, I think I'm going to study all the documentation that comes with this radio. Thank you very much, uh, viewer, for pointing out that all the stuff is on Radio Museum. I searched for it there, of course. I'm a member of Radio Museum, but I searched for it with the entire model number. I should have searched for it with only a portion of the model number I would have found. So here it is anyway. We'll take a look at the uh, documentation and uh, let's see if we just can't get lost for a while looking at this stuff. Okay, I think we'll start with this. Oh, this is not a very good copy, but anyway, it just looks like an advertising sheet anyhow. Here it is down here. The Westinghouse Executive is an outstanding clock radio made for those who demand the finest. <laughs> uh, something hour, day and date. Yeah, it has that little indicator up there. Switches appliances on and off. Oh, so the plug on the back is switched. Five tube radio will turn off lulling you to sleep, awaken you to your favorite programs. Yeah. <laughs> so there it is. Okay, we're not going to get too far with that. Now, let's see. Alignment, uh, schematic, and spare. spare. This must be a part list. Let's look at that next. Yeah, part list. Is there anything in here that might be surprising? Doubt it very much. Audio detector unit. Suggested list price, 85 cents. Look, here's something they're selling for a nickel. Dial drive, a nickel. <laughs> uh, yeah, 15, well, well, here's something, you get this for a nickel. U station, dial mounting U station. And two cents, for two cents you can get these screws. <laughs> Quick, let's put our orders in right now. Okay. This isn't going to help us too much right at the moment, but it might be of some help down the road. Cabinet list. Okay, let's go back. Now, we've got the alignment sheet. Let's take a look at that. Specifications. 1530 to 1610. I can hear my cat crying to go outside. Voice coil, 3.2 ohms. Power consumption, 30 volt amps, about maybe 25 watts. Probably puts it as volt amps because the motor and the clock uh, uh, has quite a phase shift uh, in the current voltage, I'm going to guess. Typical tube, line up 50C5 for the output tube. Frequency at which this receiver will operate is indicated on the rear cover. Warning, F the frequency at which it do not operate as 60, oh I see, 60 cycle receiver on 25 cycles or vice versa. Well I thought everybody could operate at 25 on 60. If you had a transformer built for 25 cycles, you could run it on 60. Well what's in here that would matter? Doesn't the power just go straight to the rectifier? Don't know. Don't know why it says that. Maybe they, maybe they say that because they can sell more radios that way or something. IF and RF alignment, turn volume, this is going to be just the usual stuff. And there's the tubes. There's the, so the, the antenna trimmers on the inside, you can see because the antenna wire comes right here. It hooks right there, can't get that wrong. Well, I probably can. So it looks like at this point all three of these clock controls are, are not working. Maybe the sleep control is. Just looks like none of these are working properly. But the clock is running, which is a great thing can't see it in this diagram but there's another knob just like this below this one there's two mechanical 
adjusting uh, knobs and rods going into the clock on this radio. Okay. Oh, what's this? No, radiation loop referred to in steps two and three. Made up of two turns and so they were approximately eight inches, one foot from the receiver. Yeah, okay, no problem. Okay, let's look at the schematic. I'm distracting myself from the mac maximum distraction here. Okay, here we go with the schematic. Can we not rotate the schematic? Okay, here we go. Let's start with the power supply here. This is obviously a redrawn schematic. Looks very nice. Let's see, we come in here, plug it in, you're running the clock right away. There is the connection. 0.01 capacitor and the half a million ohm resistor in parallel from one side of the line straight to the chassis. Well, sort of straight to the chassis. We have a neon bulb. I haven't seen that yet. Straight to the chassis. Switch one, switch two. Clock mechanism. Uh, this must be a neon bulb that lights the clock a bit. It, perhaps it's in there, I just haven't seen it. Neon bulb. Uh, uh, uh. So it's really hooked up. Hooked up through this resistor. Of course, neon bulbs draw virtually zero current. To, to, to glow. Um, so all it needs is something more than 80 volts on it, and there would be 125 volts right off of here. So it's run, so this neon bulb is run right off the power supply here. Hmm. Okay. Um, a bit confusing how all this is laid out. So here's a capacitor tying. I don't know, tying something to something. Is it right across the line? I think it's right across the line. It looks like it's actually right across the line here. Yeah, so so this guy's important too, from that point of view. Uh, and that it's got 120, it's got Niagara Falls pushing on it. So, look at the speaker. Okay, so the speaker has a connection back to the chassis. This is worth taking note of. Uh, exactly why they would do that, I'm not sure. A lot of radios, they don't. The speaker is completely isolated. From the trans, like because of the transformer, not this one. This has some implications on how I connect test equipment to the speaker. Here's that uh, package. Well, I like to call packages. Um, there's, a, there's another word for it. Um, this one's got lots of stuff in it. So this is a complex one. The last radio I had had three capacitors in one of these things, and. Uh, it, big deal. You could have replaced it all with external parts. This one has a lot of stuff in here. So these are commonly used um, kind of just after the detector and where the audio is on its way maybe to the to the first triode or maybe out of the triode and on its way to the uh, amplifier. They, they like to use these packages there. Package not the right word. All voltages measured from common negative, okay, from the negative bus, not from the uh, chassis using a, a good voltmeter plus, plus or minus 20 percent in any case unless otherwise denoted denoted shouldn't be uh, unless otherwise noted all capacitor values less than one are in microfarad and above one are in picofarad 600 volt rate all resistors so won't have one k is a thousand on this okay great now let's go run through this whole thing at a glance. Uh, looks pretty simple. So here we see the IF cans. The outside of the cans are attached to the chassis. And the other radio I had, one of these cans was insulated. Two of them were insulated from the chassis and had a special drain to the chassis arranged. Not this one. Straight on. Nothing else really bizarre. That's not bizarre anyway. So, iron core, iron core loop antenna. Usually they say ferrite here, but iron core? Is it actually a piece of iron? Looks like ferrite to me. Looks like a carbon rod. We have antenna trimmer and the tuner. Right on to grid three. Grid one, of course, is getting the oscillator. The oscillator is being picked up by this. Uh, 
little uh, uh, trick here. This is probably embedded in one coil form in the radio. You can't you can't see this separately. Doesn't take much though to tickle up a voltage onto this. So this is the oscillator, and of course it's feeding back, getting amplified, and somehow coming around again. Oh, so what they've done is right in the cathode, they have this coil right in the cathode, so that's how it's coming around. Uh, 12B86, anything else funny going on? 100 volts and 100 volts, not very much B plus in this radio. 100 volts, 100 volts, 60. And they saved the big whopper 120 for the output to you know, ram that current in the speaker. Uh, it's really nice how they've drawn this. This is really nice. I mean, you can just look at it and you can see everything. Uh, 150 here with a bypass, a very small bypass. So, hmm, I wonder if that's supposed to generate some kind of uh, bias on the cathode. Not, not, not sure about this. 150 ohms, that sounds like a cathode resistor already. Okay, on to the next, well, oh, continue on. Output comes here and it goes into this resonant coil. This coil is singing along at 455 kilohertz. Where's the big, here's the big, here's the big whopper here, 3.3 uh, megohms to isolate these two grids and preserve the high impedance nature of the grid circuits here. You have a gray big resistor here so they don't get sucked dry by the low impedance down here. Yeah, very low. Okay, uh, the output from the transformer heads to the grid. The grid is picking up the AVC down here. Likewise, this AVC Oh, they, they return this to the ABC line. This ABC works its way. DC voltage through here, up there, and there. Da da. So two first two tubes controlled by ABC, of course. Um, uh, suppressor grid just tied back to the cathode here. Have a capacitor between the cathode and the grid. 0.01. Actually, actually, it's actually B minus. This is B minus. This is a capacitor to B minus. This is a basically AC or signal grounding the bottom of this coil. So you get maximum action in the coil. Maximum action in the coil. And nothing heading up this way. Especially heading around for another, another round through the radio where you end up with feedback. It's surprising there isn't an isolating resistor in here, but then I'm not a radio designer. Um, so, so we get 100 volts, 100 volts again, same voltage, screen and plate. Output goes through the next transformer, comes out. Uh, a little bit interesting here, so it's hooked up to one diode. The other diode, what's the other diode doing? The other diode. The other diode is connected to B minus down here. This is a nice uh, schematic, the way it's drawn. So, okay. Uh, so they're just shorting this guy out. This other one's just shorted out the other plate here. It's doing nothing. In other words, so you have one diode um, rectifying the output of the IF transformer. The DC component is blocked from the audio circuits by this guy on the slider side. Some Sometimes they block it here. Often this is where they like to block it. DC therefore, the DC circuit coming off the diode here uh, is all through this volume control and down to ground. And down to B minus. B minus. Don't say ground. So all the voltage that develops is here, and it's applied this way 
this big resistor, because there's virtually no current flowing through it, shouldn't drop much voltage, I don't think. Maybe. It's an awfully big resistor, and sometimes there is a little bit of current in a grid circuit. But All told, this is just your classic straightforward radio. Now, out of the volume control comes the audio signal, the DC blocked and left behind here. A huge resistor. I've, I've noticed now in quite a few radios that this location, it tends to be just a whopper of a resistor, 6.8 megaohms. Might as well just open circuit that thing. The audio goes up here, goes through the triode, 60 volts on it, comes down here. Uh, what is this? This, this, what is this? This goes to here. This is B plus on this line. Don't know exactly what this is for. Uh, some kind of uh, filter for filtering something, maybe dumping any RF that made it all this way. Maybe this dumps it here. This is a filter to do that without dumping any audio. Audio heads through this capacitor, 60 volts blocked from the grid here. There it is again. Same, same, it's exactly the same circuit. No, it isn't. It's close though. What, what, what? So this looks, this goes to B minus. So this looks more like a uh, um, grid leak style of creating a bias. But over here is a cathode bias resistor. So I'm not sure what this is all about. I'm just stupid about this. I'm, I'm about that. Stupid. Okay. But this I'm not. So this is the um, a cathode resistor. It's going to generate a voltage drop, going to cause the uh, cathode here. You know what's happening? My, my thoughts are flipping back. I can hear the TV in my house. All that kind of stuff is going on in the back of my head here. Uh, so keep, just keep focused, Jim. Try to focus. So 150 ohms typical for a resistor here. Uh, generating a, a positive voltage or resulting in a positive voltage on the ca ca cathode relative to the grid and that gives you the bias. So this is a guy we got to check out. No bypass capacitor but this guy, well this is just another capacitor seeking B minus. So again I think this is a drain for RF that's made it this far. I'm not, not sure. That's a pretty big resistor. Of course this is a uh, Low, low impedance here too. And then finally what's left goes through the transformer, comes out the speaker. So this is really a very, very straightforward, classically designed um, uh, radio here. There's really nothing spectacular going on at all. This is like right out of the uh, design book. You can probably find this circuit in design books and even in uh, tube manuals sometimes contain circuits re recommended circuits so okay so this is guys not a hard guy to uh, understand not a hard guy to troubleshoot on at all great so um not much else to look at here i'm back to looking at the radio at this point so i'm going to stop take a little break chat with my wife a little bit and then I'll decide if I'm going to go further today with this on the radio or if this is all you're going to get from me uh, today. Okay, so I've given a little bit of consideration. I think uh, what I'm going to do with this radio, c considering how uh, uh, how it seemed to operate very poorly while I was trying to uh, quick align it, the IF on the last video, I think what I'll do is I'm going to replace uh, these two capacitors and then I'm going to attempt a uh, again an IF alignment. This time we'll put a little more effort into it, try and inject the signal more appropriately, and see if we can't get sensible behavior out of the radio. If if we can't, I would get worried about this thing. But I think this is after the detector. It's hooked up to the volume control and stuff here. Um, well, you know what? Maybe it's going to work better once I get rid of this and this. Maybe, maybe I should just settle on that. Let's try that. I'll get rid of those two. Okay, stop the video a little bit too soon there. What is this guy doing here? Aha. Uh -huh. 
So we, can you see that? He soldered back to the chassis here with his big solder blob. And there's the parallel resistor, the 500 mega ohm resistor. There, that's what this guy's doing. And he's got a couple of pretty good solder strikes on him here. Soldering iron strikes. So that's why he looks a little different too. This could be the original. In, in some ways it looks like a replacement. And I kind of thought this one would be that. What is this guy doing? He's you know, it's hooked up to uh, a terminal on one of the IF cans. And the other side of it See it. It's going to this bead, it's going to this connection right to the live wire here. So what capacitor of what size here? Oh, what was that? I like the sound of that. Come on out of there. You know, when, when they design these radios, they have to design them with space for the parts that are gonna go in. I imagine. What's the size on this? Place it anyway. 0 0.047, 0 0.05, 0.047, and right on one of the wires. 0.047. I think we saw that. Let's look at the schematic again. I think it's probably this one right here. 0.047, C5. Right on one of the lines here. Uh, so that's guy's job. I think. Don't quote me on this. Is to silence RF coming in, noise basically coming in on the power line. I think that's his purpose. And then the other, the other one, the blue one, I'm just taking a look at it now to get the size from it. If I can. 500 volt. The, uh, the the size is, uh, is is messed up on the capacitor. I can't actually read it. So let's take a look at it together here. Cut this guy out of here. Mallory. says MFD 600 volt and the number in front of the MFD is messed up. It almost looks like somebody's penciled something in. This, this, this got some funny holes in it. This is a funny looking hole here. I think it's just solder strikes though. So on the schematic though, I'll just peek on my own here. On the schematic, that, that one is uh, um, 0 0.01 C7. Hey, let's look at the parts list. Come on, join me for this. Parts list and well, I'm looking for our capacitor. What? Doesn't it list anymore? Huh? Capacitor, capacitor. What's going on here? It, it must be down lower. Cabinet parts, chassis parts. They didn't even list it. Am I seeing this right? I don't. I don't believe it. Chassis parts. So they're not really. These are not components, and these are all specialized parts. Except for the lamp, maybe. So these are not components. It's not a component list. Hmm. It's not so helpful. No component list. No component list. So that so does it indicate what kind of capacitor it is? Where 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 am I? Where am I? Point oh one. 
just says C7. C7 gives a number. There's no number on here. Wow, well, well, here we are. But this is, no, this is the order number. How do you like that? Okay, well, we're not going to get help that way. So, just excuse me while I continue to lose my mind here. Uh, okay, concentrate, concentrate. Uh, capacitor should be at 0 0.01. So, let's test these guys and see, see, see who we can get from them on a test. to the chassis, 0.01, 50 volts, correct, correct, opens up fine, 150, opens up perfect, 250, so this is, looks like a very, very good capacitor, now let's check its capacitance, 0.01, Snaps open here, right there. So now, make sure we're on the right scale here. Point 0.5, so this is the scale we're on, point 0.5. So if I push this aside and read what it says under it, point 0.1, not point 0.01. Point 0.01's, point 0.01 is way down here. This is reading Point one. And, and you know what? Point one. I don't know what I'm going to say here. <laughs> Did somebody write one on there? Is that supposed to be a handwritten point one? Well, I wasn't expecting that. Considering its job, probably, probably I don't know what to say. Let's check the other one. See what kind of weirdness we get into with that. Okay, so I have to put a clip lead on the terminal I just cut and cut it off of because I won't remember. Okay, here's the capacitor here. The 0.047, yep. <coughs> 50 volts. Opens right up. 150. This capacitor is testing good too. As capacitors go, uh, this is really quite quite good. I get a moment of discharge there. Then we'll measure the um, its capacitance. Okay, so 0 0.05 on this scale somewhere. There it is. And if we look on the scale very carefully. 0.05, right there. So the other one was reading 0.1. It must be a 0.1. This one must be a 0.1. Let's look at the schematic again and just see if uh, see if I 0 0.01, 0 0.047. It can easily be those ceramic uh, disc type capacitors, can, can be the size easily. So, yeah, I think I got all there is to replace, but I don't think it's going to have much effect. 
So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, at my leisure today, I'm going to replace those two capacitors and then give the radio a test and we'll, we'll see what we got at my leisure. Okay, I've got the two capacitors changed. Let's just let's push this one over here. Okay, let's see if the radio works better because of that. Anybody want to wager? So I think it will work the same because the capacitors tested fairly well. Okay, and uh, check the switch. Switch is on. There we go. Power on. Dim bulb behaving normally. Clock is running. So we may need the antenna booster here again to get this guy enough. Ooh. Oh, here we are. You might not be able to hear that. It's got a bit of a still got a bit of a bit of a hum in it. Is that because of my booster over here? Let's just talk about what happened there. You might have seen me just put my finger over and I just lightly touched this and there was a discharge from my hand, probably static electricity or something like that. And then the radio cleared up. So I've had this kind of experience in many different situations over the years. Um, in some cases, uh, I've had a situation where a radio would, would fade out. And then if you just touch a certain terminal, it would pop back on again. Uh, what exactly that is, I don't know. But it's on my list. It's been on my list for a long time. So there's a kind of distortion in there, kind of a warbly sound in the, in the guy's voice, which I think can be called intermodulation distortion, but I'm not sure about that. So, what about that sound? How can we get rid of that sound, that uh, intermodulation? Doing a proper alignment might resolve that. Maybe. So, let's do that. Um, I'm going to get the instructions up on the screen. We'll just do the IF thing and I think maybe I'll call it uh, quits at that point. So this isn't quite what we're after. Let's see if I can get the alignment instructions to go on here. Here we are. Four fifty five. monitor the uh, level of the signal in the speaker. Remember the speaker has a chassis ground on it which might present problems for me if I use one of my usual instruments there. 
455, so here's what we want to do. 455 kilocycle modulated signal, pin 7 of the 12 BE6 via a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Set gain capacitor to minimum. I'll do that now. So I don't forget. Adjust the primary and secondary of T2 for max. Adjust the primary and secondary of T1 for max with this connected here. So let's go 12BE6, pin number 7. 0.1. 12BE6. Pin number 7. Up this way. Who's the 12BE6? There it is right there. 12BE6. Pin number 7. Right in the open. would appear to be the antenna signal coming onto pin number 7. It would appear that we're going to put the IF frequency into the 6BE6 on the uh, antenna grid. Better get my, get my machine ready here. Um, okay, that said, did I not say between the chassis yeah, I think it said chassis. Let me just take a peek here at what it says. Apply a getting adjust. Oh, it doesn't actually say. Well, it must say somewhere. Um, I would tend to do these to the B minus. You know, it doesn't actually say in here, anywhere, unless I'm overlooking it. I don't know why, I think I saw it say hey, you're supposed to do this to the chassis, but I can't find that anywhere in here. Okay, so if we're going to go to B-, minus, that B- minus is easy to spot on these capacitors. So, we would do, we would do that. I can, again, I can do this in my shop because this is going to be powered from a transformer, not plugged right in the wall, the uh, the radio here. I don't know how good that is. That's not very good. That's a little better. And then we'll just connect that when the time comes. Okay, and I'll make sure the signal generator is set appropriately. So I want this at 455. And the signal level, well, we'll find out. It said use a modulated signal, a thousand hertz tone on there. Okay, we won't be needing the antenna booster. In fact, that's the opposite of what we want to do. Let's power it up. So I have that ground connection already made into the B minus point. did not connect the meter. So there's a problem now. If uh, I have this ground connected to B minus, that, now that's the instructions I'm remembering. You want to connect the uh, output meter to the speaker, but the speaker is grounded to the chassis. So in fact, you'll be putting this ground onto the chassis. That'd be a ground on the chassis and a ground on the B minus. Maybe doing away with the capacitor here, shorting it out. Yeah, you know, it, it might be harmless, but I, I'm just not going to bet on that. So I'm going to have to use. Really, unfortunately, I'm going to use. Uh, so, so what happens if you do put a ground on the chassis?
Okay, tapping my fingers to answer the question. The answer is, hey, let's find out what happens. Let's find out what happens. So I'm going to plug this in the meter here. Oh yeah, my not so good meter. It's good enough for this test. So if I take this ground and I put it here, nothing will happen. If I put it on a chassis, Surprisingly enough, the radio goes quiet. Okay, that's not the end of the world. Not sure why it would go quiet. Why, why would it go quiet? Um, I'll get at the speaker here. Let's go around. Okay, now I'm looking at the wires. One of them is supposedly to the chassis and I can't see. So what I'm gonna do, get my voltmeter. I'm gonna take a look for continuity. Wait a minute, this will be right through the uh, right through the voice coil. I don't know how this is going to work. So, one lead on the chassis, one lead to the speaker. You should see 8 ohms anyway. So that's, that was going down towards zero. Now the other side, maybe we're going to see it also go down towards zero. So let's see. Um, how am I going to figure that out? Sometimes you can see that quite clearly that one terminal is grounded. You cannot see that in this at all. In fact, in fact, they don't look grounded. Okay, let's just experiment here. I'll put a ground. I'll put this uh, grounded terminal onto one of the speaker terminals. Silence on the other one. Let me clip it right on. Silence. So that's the same, I think that's the same effect as just putting it on the chassis. But if I put it on B minus, it's just nothing happens. Okay, uh, take it off. It's just making this decision, it's a little difficult here. Um, and I've got the wrong meter down, so let's let's correct that now. Get the, get the better meter down here. The better older meter. I think the ground situation is the same with this. Let me just check it. Whoa. Just gonna look for resistance between the a real ground point or power system ground point in my shop like this and this. This equals to zero. It's a three prong plug on this, just making sure. So same issue now. Put this up to the speaker. Very same effect. Silence. So uh, let's do this. Let's get the tone coming out of this radio strongly from the uh, signal generator. Okay. 
clip this on. All right, that was pretty exciting. That did not sound right at all. Turn down the signal generator, and turn down the volume. Got this kind of twisted around here. Volume rate down. Why, that does not sound right at all. That just sounds like a horrible thing there. So, four fifty-four. Why does it sound like that? Now I did try aligning this, but it was a pretty, pretty poor attempt. So you can hear again that that kind of that hum or whir that's in there, that's a problem that has to be resolved. And that's not going to go away from alignment. So, I'm uh, not just going any further on this particular thing um, until, until this other problem is resolved in there. Uh, if the capacitor, if the radio was full of paper capacitors, I'd be busy replacing them all and might fix the problem. But in fact, the radio has uh, ceramic disc capacitors in it, and they tend to be reliable, but maybe not. One. Oh, what's the story on that? So I'm wiggling a terminal on the volume control. That's probably what was going on there. Nothing to do with the capacitor. Right in here. Twenty-three. One. Oh well, what there is is everything inside that thing. Let's take a look at where this, uh, I'll call it package, is in the actual uh, circuit diagram. Let's take a look at that. So uh, the way they would show this, so there's the terminal numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you can see them appearing over here. Four, five, six, seven, Five, six. It's not funny to put the numbers up here too. What about here's one and four and one and two? So one, two, three, four, four, four. Oh, oh my gosh. certainly not a simple matter. I mean, there's a lot of parts in here and they're doing lots of stuff. So some of it, some of it is over here. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's pretty easy to start concluding that there's problems with the capacitors that are buried in this thing. Pretty easy. So one way around this is to literally install discrete components. Just do away with this thing and install discrete components. In some cases, the connections here are, uh, let me see, so this is produced right out, this one's produced right out, so is this. These two are, this one, they all are. All the connections or terminal points of all these components are hooked up to these leads here. There's nothing contained inside. I guess that wouldn't really matter anyway. I could figure out a way of getting around it, but uh, that's, that's one step. I have done some radios where I've replaced only one, where I've you know, figured out one of them is bad, and, and there's ways of just not utilizing the one that's inside here, in some cases. Man alive. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it, um, how are you going to guess at which one of these is worth fiddling with? 
could probably do some tests on this thing. Especially reading these resistances, because they're they're produced onto these terminals, so you can actually read right in there. That would be one thing to do. Do my best to test this thing and see if I can detect somehow what's wrong with it. Like, see, pin two is just this got this capacitor on it. Likewise, three just has this. So you know, I might, might be able to get some distance in testing this thing. This thing. Now, am I wasting my time with it? Is it actually in perfect shape? And I've just gone over there because I'm dumb. And it's really another matter entirely. And what would that be? Let's, let's just listen to this radio some more and uh, ponder. Maybe while we're listening to it. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well. Okay, where's that list I put stuff on? So now we're hearing the signal from the signal generator because you can hear the uh, the uh, modulation on it. Why is it getting, it's getting fainter and fainter? That's the end of the road with the short. And you're supposed to do this with the plates open. That's where we're going right now. But, so an instability occurs at this point. Uh, and no doubt hooking up this equipment is part of what's causing the instability or making it manifest itself. If I go a little further though, we're, we're, we're into this weird world. The last radio I worked on had a feature where it introduced IF feedback in order to create a BFO-like second signal on the radio. Maybe this one's doing it by accident. And then suddenly, boom, you can hear it. So there's a chance that what's happening here is that those oscillations are really, really powerful. And literally, the AVC is quieting the radio down, and you can only hear the powerful stuff. You can't hear this anymore. I don't know. That's nice, though. We can fiddle with the alignment now. Fiddle is the word. What are we doing at 465 over here? Must be 455. What are you doing? Almost like I'm tuning the radio, like this has become another local oscillator. And uh, as, I, as I swing this, it's okay. Let's set it where it's supposed to be. It sounds like it's uh, properly adjusted. Now I had a lot of trouble doing the IF. What did I use to do it? I used this guy. Should be down here first. You can say, wow, this is behaving like it's not hooked up to anything. Yeah, I never did finish hooking it up. Because it quieted the radio, and then I got distracted. It's kind of interesting, too, that the position of the radio on my bench is making a big difference. to change everything, didn't it? Yeah. 
the meter, got the meter working properly. But what happened to the IF signal? Did it shift? No. So, do you hear there's a heterodyne? As I vary this, you hear the heterodyne go up and down. Come on, you can focus. Um, that tells me again there's another signal in the IF, and the two of them are just being brought together when you're hearing the uh, audio heterodyne from it. Carry on with what I'm doing. doing anything. What happened there? Wow. Oh my gosh, this is 50,000 miles out. Fifty thousand miles. a little screwball here. I just moved that slug to its limit. Something screwball for sure. Let me give it more power here. Didn't make a lot of difference, did it? So is this the tone from my signal generator, or is this the noise? Let's get the... Let's boot it up. Look at that. I think uh, this puts a different picture on things here. Okay, maybe I was doing it all wrong there. tone go. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> I can hear it and I'm not paying attention to it. Okay, here we go. So that moved the slug right to what felt like a limit and it wanted to go further. strange. Oh, this is better. Okay, that's sounding a little bit better. I think that 
that's kind of a peak. Okay, I think that's that. Volume down. Pull this off. Oh, what you say? <laughs> I don't know if you just saw me jump there. I got one of those little nervy things that happen. It happens to me anyway. I get little nervy pulses down here sometimes or in my arm. It, it always makes me think I'm getting electrocuted. <laughs> Speaking about which, let's just turn the power off here do these so there's nothing hooked up to the radio except that meter I have some concern over there. how well will you work now Okay, Mr. Radio. Sounds like sharper tuning. Excuse me, sharper tuning. There we go. Okay, so stations down around here. Looking for the French station. So that's eight uh, sixty. It should be seven fifty. Wow, it's really cramped. Six fifty, seven fifty. I'm right in this area anyway. But in fact, you can't really see it. The pointer's way over here by twelve. Local oscillator is way out on this radio, so that uh, bringing that in could restore the alignment quite dramatically to the radio. Hey, you know what? I'm fully distracted. Let's keep going. Let's keep going here, um, because the next stages are really easy to do. The next uh, alignment stages. So we have a local oscillator adjustment right in here. Uh, okay, right. So let's take the antenna here. We'll stick it. Stick this. Basically, you can do this with it. Now that that might throw the front end off. In fact, I'm sure it said uh, use a use use this. Use your bizarro antenna coupler thing here. Do you notice I, I'm not speaking in full, proper sentences? Uh, that's because I'm doing my best to relax myself and be as informal as I can here. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do before I go back out into the, the horrible, horrible world. So we should do this. Um, I will take a look at the instructions because they are so simple. 1610, 
oscillator trimmer maximum. So that's easy. 1610 first. Just the signal generator until we, we hear it. Should be any time now. More power. Well, this, this might just be proving how poorly aligned this radio really is. I'm going to move the signal generator to, to give it uh, more effect here. Just, I'm going to do what I said I wasn't going to do, just to just to get it just to get the radio uh, tuning it I'm right on the antenna. So that idea did not go well. That did not go well. Okay, um, let's spin this around. I'll put the antenna very close to my booster antenna here. So again, my signal generator is going to uh, energize a small loop and I'm going to tune a bigger loop here to resonate uh, at our desired frequency of 1600. Oh my gosh, come on. I have all these uh, alligator clips that my sweaty little fingers can't handle. Oh my gosh. Okay, I got it on there. So we're doing full power from the signal generator at just above 16. Let's just take it down below 16. Let's say 1528. Um, that's kind of interesting. Um, so I'm tuning the antenna coil over here. I'm not touching the radio at all. Just indicates where this guy's tuning. Yeah. He's tuning right out there. Right out around 16. I thought I heard it. It's that weird, that weird stuff that goes on here. Okay, tune down to who knows where. Probably around 12 in fact. If I think, think about it for a minute. Can we find it? There it is. Okay, now we're going to work our way up. The radio is picking up 1610. The uh, pointer has disappeared uh, from view right up behind this this thing here. So yeah, that that might be close to 1610. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, you know what? I gotta sort out this pointer before I get too much further. Well, let's keep going. 
because um, they'll make that tomorrow's project. I'll finish the radio off tomorrow, maybe. Okay, once I did not get a shock, just scared myself with the noise. Let's adjust the. Uh, so, how can. Oh, yeah, that's right, I pulled the antenna away. Oh my gosh, it just, it just went totally away. to get it really close. So how can I adjust the oscillator? I can't adjust the oscillator. The only thing I can do is play around with the RF and see if it's way out. I will do that. If I can see what I'm doing, I will do it. Hopefully my light won't fall on me here. Weak plastic thing. I need some screwdrivery strength here. Okay, this is the RF adjustment. You could sort of watch this meter if you dare. Just listen to this radio. down way up did I just do something useful there I think the garble is too much. I think it's above the garble at this point. We have to de-garble this guy. Yeah, so thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully that distracted you from the horrors that are uh, developing uh, outside of our houses and in our communities and all that. And uh, if I'm going to talk about that kind of stuff, I think I will put up a video all by itself. But I don't think I'm going to bother talking about it. What have I got to say? that anybody's interested in about this thing. Nothing. Nothing much. But I do know what the website is that the American government's relying on. They're relying on a website not from the uh, American government. They're relying on a website put together by a researcher in uh, the University of Washington, I think, for their, uh, their analyses. If you go looking for it, you will find it. And then you can see exactly what the White House is looking at in terms of the stuff. Now, I wasn't going to talk about that. Just cut, cut, cut. Cut. Great. Yeah, don't talk about that stuff. Don't talk about that stuff. Okay, so that's, uh, we're, we're coming along here. I, I, I really think this radio is definitely worth making work really well because this is a cool looking radio. It's got a great look to it, in fact should work fairly well and the clock works on it which is just fantastic so thanks a lot for watching uh and uh I'll see what i can produce tomorrow if i if i can get my get the steam up to do it see ya <laughs>